semifinals. And I wonder, adding these new heroes in, is it really going to to shorten the uh, the game time as well? We just have to see. Anyways, as we have done all of that pre-talk, let us go straight into the draft for game number one in this best of three as Alpha Q goes up against Unity. Gotta remember again, guys, that this is a single ban match. So we'll be seeing only the one bans come out. Zephyrus will be the first one to be off table and Murad, like we were talking about a while ago, also off table. So much respect for the jungle bans here um, for both of these teams. But look at that, Wonder Woman is open and Superman. So those are, these are really two strong picks, but they decide to not pick it at all and decide for the Morin and Batman. Batman, we've seen it in other regions as well, but it's more like a surprise pick and not necessarily something that you pick um, during our first rotation. But I guess they did change their mind. They're just teasing us a little bit. It's gonna be the Ryoma and the Superman. Yoma and Superman. I have seen before that Superman is basically a one superhero game changer from DC comic movies or animations to Arena of Valor. He is still the man of steel and this guy is definitely something to watch out from. He can basically push everybody into a certain position where you want to go. to go. And it looks like Superman that Unity is hovering a Raz, 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 but he is but a he kill monger, I suppose, pose, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, from um, side of Alpha Q, Alpha Q, they do they have, do a, have lot a lot of power picks here. Picks here. Violet, Violet and Kill Brock, really, really, really strong, strong late game, game heroes. 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 It's gonna be really, really scary, scary. 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 and scary. 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 Scary pick way back before if you kind of want to go or if you're going to go up against a composition that has a lot of control or has a lot of melee heroes and looking from that perspective unity kind of like went with a lot of them so the outchan might be able to just like be able to root everybody put them in place and give lots of time for their uh, other members to kind of like you know position around that and having or going up against a superman might be something that you don't want to you know, let them set up. So Diao Chan might be a really good answer. Yeah, and just take note, Superman has the ability to remove crowd control as well and try to catch people off guard. A good flank from Superman can immediately try to burst down mm -hmm. these squishy targets. Exactly. Violet, Kilgrop, Diao Chan, Lumber could probably try to set up for a good combo with Diao Chan and everybody else that will deal the damage which is, you know, the Violet and the Killgraft pick. But at the same time, these heroes take a while to rack up, to wrap up in terms of damage, especially Killgraft. If you put Killgraft on the side lane and of the opposite opposite team recognizes that, okay, you know, they might bank on the Killgraft this time around, then perhaps, you know, the, uh, the pressure that they may apply during the early phases of the game might you know, try uh, might stop the growth of Kilgrath or slow it down. Rather. Yeah, and that's where your Superman and Ryoma, I think, comes in handy. Because I feel like Ryoma doesn't really need that much to actually start rolling. I mean, he, he, he can benefit from that, but he still will be able to get some pretty nice pokes in. And with the help from Superman, you're going to be able to at least lock someone down or at least put them in a position where Ryoma can just tumble in and get all of that, you know, all of that damage rolling. And yeah, it's going to be... Again, very interesting to see this because, again, we, or rather for me, I came from, you know, seeing the meta from the Philippines, and we see these type of fix, picks rather very scarce, mm. you know, and now here in India, starting it off, it's, it's going to be very um, curious, there you go, to kind of like <laughs> yeah. see this matchup unfold. Yeah, I'm also particularly interested to the Raz pick as well. Let's see how they execute. All right, speaking of how to execute this, I'm going to be passing it on to Riku here, and I request a duel for the casting. So guys, take it away. Hello, and thank you for that introduction. And it's good to be here back in Arena of Valor. Alongside with me, I've obviously got Riku. And after that draft, really seeing uh, Alpha Q and Unity go in through that, uh, there were a lot of picks that, well, I, I think the... 
the order we saw the picks in also came out as a bit of a surprise. But overall, the, both teams got some quite strong picks through. I think for Alpha Q, they've got that CC strong on their team as well as uh, just overall nice balance. Whereas Unity is more, they have these key members that uh, hold it together. At least that's how I'm seeing it here. But uh, what's your say on this? Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Unity, oh, I feel like they, in terms of flexibility, they do have the roaming potential. I feel like if they have that early lead, they will constantly pressure the jungle, which is what they're doing right now. Yeah, we can see that there. Lumber possibly getting caught out in a 1v3 situation, but there's going to be the kill graph on the back line. Could trade out for the Raz, and he's going to get caught out by the uh, Xenio, but manages to get away. There's just back and forth action here as the rest of uh, Unity coming in for the support, pushing them back. And you really talk about that roaming potential and it's happening here in the early game, the three man team roaming uh, that we can see between them. And they're just keeping Xenio uh, separated, keeping the pressure on. And that's some early game aggression being showed by Unity. So if that continues to go in that fashion, Unity might be up to uh, get control of this game and start to snowball. But we'll have to see as there's going to be the charge into the wall. Xenial able to jump out, but I think... Oh no, I spoke too soon. He's going to get taken down for the first blood. Yeah, this is the reason why you pick Superman or you ban Batman. But I guess Alpha Q had the priority on the Violet. They do believe that, you know, their late game or their mid game could save the day. But at this point, Senyal might have a bit of trouble here. Good job, by the way. But at this point, looks like a start, uh, a fight's about to start. Yep, Superman jumping in there to initiate and you about how strong he is as he's able to go in under turret tank it pick up the kill secure and they back out taking jungle on their way not only that prior to this fight they actually stopped the side of alpha q from going into their abyssal dragon and trying to sneak their way while they were busy up at the top so great rotations over um great macro play and they're gonna catch out another kill it's gonna be Ro uh, roma onto that lumber and right now, zero to three for Unity opens up a great window for them to stop the Abyssal Dragon off themselves. Yeah, they're so heavily rewarded. Despite, you know, let's sacrifice the experience of the Alice. It's okay, we don't need the hissy, hissy fit for now. But look at that, Ryoma is already level six alongside Morin. And they all, they just need those power uh, picks, the power damagers of their team. Uh, and they're going to rely on that as Superman is just going to be super explosive at this point, creating, I think he can just pretty much solo kill one of the squishies, especially Violet and uh, Dao Chan. So at this point, Alpha Q should really be careful. Yeah, definitely. I uh, would be the call there, but as you said, if they caught out alone any of the squishy members of Alpha Q, that's such a... Uh, tough situation for them to get out without CC. I think that's where they had that one uh, positive that if they stick together as a team and they can chain CC, they might be able to then get the man advantage. But right now it's going to be on to whether Unity, uh, how they play so far with their rotations have been pretty well and where they're putting the pressure because we can see up in the top lane, it looks like they, they want to harass more of that Xenio with the Superman and Morin pick. They just push him back further and further. He can't get to the safety of the tower. Superman's just bullying him at this point. No, you are not going home. You are coming back with me to my place tonight. Oh, good one there. Oh my. I've, I've seen this Superman play before, trying to shove you back to it, to your own tower at GCS. It's super classic. But at the same time, it's one of the classic Superman plays. And I believe it's a, this is a best of three series. And, you know, Alpha Q can still either get the Superman or ban the Superman. It's so difficult because I, I did mention before about the 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 three man squads or the three man rotations, two man rotations. Superman just meshes well with everybody. He can set it up as long as he has a damage dealer with him. Or if they're too far behind, then he can just practically solo kill. Okay, it looks like this time Alpha Q trying to put the pressure on. They do have the man advantage for now, but I'm not sure if that's a fight they really want to go for. Instead, they're just trying to scare Unity 
out of their jungle at this point. But look at the top lane, just the bullying, the harass that the Xenials taking it. It's so tough and they, they see it as the easiest lane because all the meanwhile, they just leave Ryoma in the bot lane, as we see, to be there on his own, soloing the Violet. Um, and they're going to be able to get that first tower for themselves. It looks like there's a bit of a mix up going in the bot side of the jungle, but I think they'll be fine. Uh, they're even pushing away the Kilgroff back to his tower. It's good rotations there by both the Morin and the Alice, and it's this fully roaming team that's going on, and it's really working well for the side of Unity. They're exactly. playing their comp how it should be played. Exactly. They're doing everything right here, Unity. The thing is, we did mention how it's a very Wombo combo set centric composition for Alpha Q. And it's so hard to execute when in the laning phase, you're just constantly being pressured with Unity all over the map, just getting the kills and then getting all the objectives, not leaving your room to breathe at all. And as you can see, Killgroth is one of the main damage dealers for the side of Alpha Q, and they're just giving him a hard time, even giving the, the lane to him instead of Violet just to defend and try to clear, defend mid, but oh, Superman so here, Blaze is super duper uh, keeping up the pressure. Yeah, and you can see Roma picking up another kill for South by Sway has picked up six of maybe these eight total kills, and that's the another thing that just works so well for the Unity team comp that it, although they stick together in other parts, but I might have to hold that there. Superman pushing back the DL Chan. Raz picks up the kill, but going in deeper to pick up the second kill, and they're going to uh, even trade out. Uh, Raz went a bit too deep, so that's a plus side for Alpha. The first kill they can get on the board, however, they're going to lose that tier 2 mid tower, and it looks like they're going to lose the tier 2 uh, bomb tower as well, so they're just left standing with that high ground, and you can see they're being a bit too, uh, actually maybe not so aggressive as Alice is able to sustain that damage, but uh, I was talking about that Roma pick, how he's able to sustain so well on his own that he's been able to push the bot lane while they put pressure in top, and now it's just opening up windows for possible objectives as Roma backing out of that fight, at least towards his teammates. Looks like they'll go for the re-engage onto Kilgroff, but he dashes out there to safety. We can see that they're holding their ground for now. Alice is going low. They need to be careful, but the knock-up coming through. Raz is going to be able to pick up the kill onto Xenio, and soon it's going to be the Lumber to follow, and they get the double kill. They even take out one more, and uh, this high ground tower won't be standing for much longer. I understand the mindset there for Alpha Q. It was a 4v5 situation. A couple of members are so low already, but they're behind in 10 for oh 10 games old, and everything is the core. so squishy. And this is Unity finishing the first game of today out in 8 minutes and 50 seconds. What a fashion, 1 to 15, uh, and just. They, they, get, they got going and they kept going. So the question there that I'll leave standing with you and Asura is really what, what could have Alpha Q done into that team comp? Yeah, actually I'm not, uh, I guess it's, uh, it's the laning phase that really killed them. Killgrass being in the jungle, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's one of those things where, okay, your power play is with the Killgrass. Aside from the Violet, let's constantly try to invade and slow his growth down. And I think that's what happened there. So I'm really, really curious what kind of adjustment, adjustment of, of drafting for, for Alpha Q. <laughs> All right, so now it's my turn to talk to Rico again. So yeah, sorry for that. I requested go. Just kidding. <laughs> that was a quick game. I know that in Arena Valor, we're going to be seeing games expand from uh, ten minutes to fifteen minutes. That's the like the possible average game time. Twenty minutes is like super late game. But with this first match, it just felt like um, Alpha Q was disoriented. Like, they had a composition that on paper looked really good, encountering all of these bruisers, all of these quick catch uh, heroes from from Unity, but I felt like Unity was just too fast. Yeah, they were very fast, and a lot of the heroes, if you, if you combine them, either two squads or three squads, they mesh really well, they complete each other, but for the side of um, Alpha Q, they're very... 5v5 centric and normally the early phases of the game of arena valor yeah. relies on two to three people map mm -hmm. and trying to invade and trying to steal bots so when you rely on that five you know five men squad to wombo combo 
uh, it's not going to end well. It's going to be a slow pace. It It's probably going to work if the team would be also become passive, mm -hmm. but Arena Valor is level four, let's go. Let's, yeah. let's rock and roll. It, it doesn't gift you or kind of reward you if you be passive, yeah. you know, in the earlier stages because it's just that fast of a game. I mean, if you're not able to set the tempo early, you basically lose everything in the late game. And I mean, from what it looks like, they were kind of holding off these mat, uh, these fights, these skirmishes. They were trying to kind of delay the game. Maybe uh, as we reach level uh, 15 minutes in, you're going to be seeing the Violet start to have her items, start to have some damage, but it never really happened. You you saw that they were, they were always going for that 4-1 split, but Alice could, couldn't, or rather the Violet couldn't really find that, uh, that free space because... Um, Unity just was okay with it. They have the Ryoma keeping an eye on that pilot always. If she tries to go over the extended, he's going to be there. And that this kind of like just halted her from making anything happen around the map or at least getting her some items for herself. Yeah. And you also have to count the pre of the squad if it's going to be a very counter uh, counter draft towards the playstyle of Unity. But it seems that it wasn't really. It was definitely something we reach level four that's the time we could shine maybe if they could have contested an abyssal dragon then make it a 5v5 team fight that could have happened they had the Sentinel for their team composition but because of the aggression of team unity they know the win conditions <laughs> of alpha q so yeah. they didn't really give them any chance um from Ooh. uh during it's a bit savage but on paper, it seemed that it was the win condition of Unity. Just keep going, not let them be together as a five-man squad. Yeah, and I mean, aside from all of that win condition spiraling on their heads, the other biggest thing that I saw here was, or rather not really the biggest thing, but a slight um, spotting there was that you saw Zenyo go 2v1 against Superman and Raz. And you think that, you know, this guy, Zenyo, he's... He's the baddest of the bad. He can absorb as much damage as possible. But like within two seconds, he basically just went up to heaven and went <laughs> back to the respawn of of Alpha Q. And but he's an angel. He is an angel, but <laughs> I mean, I don't think he wants to go high and above that quickly, especially when his team needs to be the forward uh, vanguard here. So, I mean, with all this information in hand and with Unity looking to be on the forefront of this one, this is a best of the single elimination. The next match could be the last for Alpha Q. So, let's get straight into the draft. Yeah, I, I really want to see them adjust with this Superman pick because I think it's going to be less of a headache if they pick it, pick it for themselves or just count it straight out. I'd rather probably deal with the Zephyr's jungle rather than deal with a Superman observer, I suppose. But let's see what Alpha Q decides to do at this point. They could ban off the Zephyrus again, or just ban off the Superman, which they will do. They, uh, Cold Excalibur, or rather Unity, could first pick Zephyrus if they want to, which they will, understandable. But I feel like Alpha Q can get the Alice for themselves. Alice is also a very huge problem because it enables the early game roles. That sunshine and friendship is just a good, good pre-level for Boom, uh, material. Oh, there's the Yorn, like you were talking about, and a crash to boot. So you got yourself a lot of, let's say, long range control and poke coming in from these two. Unity will be the ones now to use the out chat. We haven't seen this really be effectively in, in, implemented by Alpha Q on the previous game, but I mean, I feel like Yao Chen is just one of those uh, heroes where it's very niche in the Indian um, in the Indian scene, but I'm not really sure how it's gonna be coming out. And the crack, the crack, the hook man. Uh, it's kind of also a um, an update or at least a extra info for you guys that so won't be seeing Chognar yet here in our tournament. So if you're thinking, why are we only seeing the Alice and the Lombard? Are we supposed to be, you know, the big, the big bad truck man? Um, possibly no. And we'll be seeing Alistair. Alistair, a really interesting pick. Good against assassins as you can just immediately try to lock them down if you don't get CC'd first. If they try, if you can feel the engage coming in, then you can anticipate which target to prioritize, and at least it might be an instant 4v5. Xanus, I don't see that much. Yorn as well. But I do believe some of the pro players see uh, Yorn as a good pick in some way, whereas you don't need necessarily need um, as much to rush the attack speed items because you do have an innate barrage of arrows. Mm. 
I am curious to see how it's gonna like mesh in there. And did I see a elastic scud? Scud. Yeah, it was a scud. Like I'm seeing a lot of really interesting. That's your word. Interesting things. <laughs> Very mysterious picks. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm really curious how this for for Team Unity, uh, especially that they already got the Diao Chan, Diao Chan as well on their side. A lot of heavy CCs as usual. Um, AOE CCs more. But I do like the Alice pick for Alpha Q, and I truly believe it's going to shift up their strategies this time around. And I'm going to expect a lot of heavy roaming, pre level foremost, especially. Yeah. Although the longer this game progresses, it feels like it might be a, a leaning towards the Unity roster just because they do have uh, looks to be a much more scaling type of composition. I felt like even if you look at the comp for uh, Alpha Q, it, it doesn't seem as uh, as late game esque you know so i'm kind of I'm worried if they're going to be able to push this into the later stages or if they have this certain composition to actually fight in the uh, early game because um, i haven't really seen scud that much so i actually can't remember what he does specifically but the, again the diao chan is a good contest on certain types of heroes especially melee ones but she kind of needs to position herself well because I believe that there is some wind up time to her skills. When yeah, she uses it. wind up time. I, I think Daya Chan also does the death rush strategy mm. where she just hides in the brush. But you know what? I'm really excited for the next match. All right. So speaking of the next match, it's going to be Riku and I request a duel once again. So guys, you know what to do. Yeah, thank you for that. And we're back here into match number two. Unity were the ones to take home the first. And let's see if they can take home the win overall. Uh, I'm here alongside Riku once again. And thank you, Asurai, for that uh, pre-postgame analysis. But how are you feeling when looking at these teams' balances going in this time? Do you think that Alpha Q might stand a better chance? For me... Your, the Yorn pick was something that could be replaced with something else, but it's probably maybe they believe in the Yorn pick. Yorn is not necessarily weak, but the lack of mobility, the la the sacrifice on that flicker skill instead of something else um, is probably something uh, that they should consider. But you know what? Maybe they have their own strategy. They do have the Alice for the early game rotations, Alistair for the lockdown, but all of these squishies do not have innate mobility. They will rely on their flicker. So, especially that these guys are their main damage dealers aside from the Xanus pick. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky trying to protect um, them from the dangers, especially we have the Tell on us with the humongous range and the Zephyrus for the death from above. Oh, there's an engage. Lumber getting caught out early, pulled back in by the Grack, and that's going to be first blood for the side of Unity. And they're going to go in to finish off that of uh, the Zephyrs to get the second kill as well. It looks like we're going to have a bit of a pause from Alpha Q. They weren't expecting that. They were like, oh my god, they're in our jungle. They just got first two kills. Maybe we need to think about something. Perhaps that's the idea there, or could be some technical issues. But while we're in this pause, uh, I think it's a good time to really look at well, <laughs> as opposed to last game, I think Alpha Q had this team comp where they would have been really well off into the mid late game stages, but they never got a chance to get there. And now looking at uh, at least Alpha Q's side, I really like the uh, crash pickup. I think that's going to be great engage alongside the Lumber. As you mentioned, they got a lot of CC and the damage dealing is really going to be on the shoulders of that Zephyrus and Yawn. Uh, but we are going to hop right back into the action here uh, and see how it unfolds. Yeah, it's amazing how Unity, when they reach their level 2 or level 3, they immediately, or level 2 most importantly, they complete their skill sets, they complete their combos, and that's the moment they become aggressive. They really completely ruin Alpha Q's jungle rotation and that would mean it's so hard for them to recover not only jungle rotation they remove or try to disorient the support or rather the observers rotation as well so which would mean not enabling the side lanes or the mid lane to have the kills that they need especially with a roaming grack on their oh, side what a hook from that grack speaking of and they uh maybe possibly going to let it go and not finish off the kill 
just taunting him, just teasing with him. I don't think they expected that. I, I'm pretty sure they figured they'd be able to finish off the kill onto the allies though, but it doesn't matter. They catch up with Crash. He's gonna go into the Metamorphosis, trying to back off that ZV on the run. Uh, Shomps under the turret, trying to save him, is able to put down some CC, and we see Crash jumping in under for safety, but uh, it looks like Zephyrus needs to be careful on that back line, but they're just gonna go right on in under the tower and they are going to pick up that kill for themselves. Meanwhile, we do see that of, uh, oh, I believe it's Zephyr's, my bad, I was saying, on Unity's side is gonna be uh, going in Xanus on that of Alpha Q's side. And they're trading out some big damage there. Looks like Excalibur could go down, but he's not gonna go down without five picks up Banjuri. And then Shom's getting caught in the action, and he's gonna get taken down in the 1v2 situation. Unity, as you said, playing aggressive as ever, already picked up that first Abyssal Dragon right after that pause, and have moved on to follow up with a few kills and objectives as they're looking here for the top tower, but not going to pick up. But that's gonna be the replay of what just happened. Wow, I really thought that, you know, Excalibur was about to fall there because that's two members jumping in, but it's not going to be enough because they're not even level four just yet. Only the Alistair was level four around that time. So which means key ultimates from the Lumber is not going to be present in a, in a skirmish. And that's super important to set up team fights or try to set a disengage from an aggressive unity. And they will, they will constantly do this as the game goes by. We see another free man rotation into the topside jungle of Alpha Q. They're going in deep under the tower. Lumber is low. Blaze going on the chase, trying to pick it up. He gets the kill. And they've locked down that of, I believe, Ethan Q. He's gone within a second. And this rotation and aggression coming out between the Daochan, uh, Scud, and I believe that would be the... Uh, Grack. The Grack is just... I think that's such a key part of it, making sure no one escapes those hooks. For the most part, have been on on point, but we do see a miss one there. Meanwhile, in the bot, there's going to be a bit of a trade out there, uh, and Sion actually going to pick up a kill for himself. But Tawana did come along to pick up a kill onto Yawn, so it opens up a window for them to at least push the bot uh, lane right now. But that's not what they should be worried about. It's three time boundary getting caught out once again, and not in a very good position. And that's just, once again, this free man rotation working out so well. They take Dao Charm from the mid lane to go and roam. And the oh, CC there is just working out well. It's a bit of a difference to what we saw previously. Instead of uh, positioning CC, it's more rooting and stunning, uh, as well as uh, team effort. So it's a bit of a slower game so far, but nonetheless, Unity is still in charge. Yeah, super dominating. As you can see, Ethan might fall, and he will, as four members just clumped up all together here on the mid lane with the Abyssal Dragon already spawned. Sean might be in trouble here. He dashed towards the danger yeah, and he's gonna goes, suffer. Yeah, goes in and tries to aggress that with no follow-up damage coming out from the side of Alpha Q. And you can see as soon as Banjuri jumps in, he's like, well, they're low health, I'm full health. Math, quick math, I should win, <laughs> but he, he doesn't, he doesn't. He's instead going to lose that second tower. Uh, meanwhile, we do see that of Zed and, uh, I'm not so uh, sure how to say this, Chai, Chai TV uh, able to pick up that Abyssal Dragon. Uh, this might be a kill going over to Crash if he's able to land a CC and follow up damage, but no, it's gonna be Scud just walking on out of there. But uh, Zephyr's looking for the fight. You don't wanna go into a 1v3, you will be punished for that. So Unity, they are getting punished for their mistakes and I think that's the only chance Alpha Q at this point has to really get back into the game like right now as we see that crack has gone a bit too deep on his own but Daljan supporting over the wall able to get the root down and the stun and they're gonna get knocked up however needs to be careful Grack with the ultimate uh, and pulling them all in Shomp's gonna be the first to fall and they continue on following down with Ethan Hugh He's trying to make the escape gets caught under the tower and uh, yeah it's just an unstoppable Force when they work together as a team. Yeah, exactly. Cyprinophobia has really good wave clear with no with no waves to protect you from the hook of the brack, then immediately you might have to give up a turret. The constant pressure that Unity has been doing for the past few few minutes of the game is just creating a lot of what do you call this experience gap and they're forced and Alpha Q is just forced to deal with all of these things without giving time for themselves to breathe 
for them to soak up experience, to farm all the lanes and the jungle, it's so difficult. ZB, but first of all, that's gonna be Crash going down, and look how low Zed is gets out of there, going for the back, Yawn just barely misses that, oh, and uh, luckily he's gonna be able to get to safety, but not so lucky for Alpha Q, as Yawn just deletes it within an instant, uh, in his own base, under his power, but it does not matter to Unity, as they dive in there to pick up the kill onto the Lumber, following up with that of Ethan Hugh on the Xanus, and that's going to be, uh, uh, right now they don't have the minion wave, so that's a bit of a problem for them. Uh, looks like maybe ZB has gone AFK, maybe having some issues. No, he's back in the fight and needs to be rightfully so, uh, because I think his team needs to rely on that so much for engage there from the crash with the metamorphosis. But he misses, does it backwards, and that opens up for Unity to get into the base of Alpha Q, where 8 minutes 35 in, looking like a similar finish time if they're able to win out this team fight, but Alpha Q won't go down without a fight. They're gonna be able to go in all in right now, picking up the Tawanis, looking for more, but look at how low Grack gets out once again, so tanky at this point. Meanwhile, Dao Chan on the back line, able to put down the CC and trade out even when getting dived upon. She's just gone so far ahead that level 12, two level advantage to pretty much everyone on the side of Alpha Q, but they're not done yet as there's going to be the Zan uh, Zephyrus joining in and trying to finish off the kill. And he is able to pick that one up. So right now, Unity looked like they could close out the game, especially with the respawn timers uh, on the side of Alpha Q. But they're playing it safe. They're backed off here. Maybe go for another dragon, or do you think they're going to gather together and go for that team fight? Maybe even uh, go for uh, the Dark Slayer. Perhaps. I think that's one of the, uh, the safest choices at the moment, because if it's too risky to try to dive in, I mean, they, they actually suffered a little bit of um, damage uh, there from the engage. They were a little bit too greedy. Cypranophobia didn't have any mana anymore to actually try and clear out the waves and maybe finish down the core. There's still a potential, uh, I mean, the Lumber CC really helped out, try to secure and scare a few members away from Unity, but they were a little bit too overextended and they managed to clear out a few members, uh, scare out a few members, but then again, Zephyrus was there already in time, has respawned. Dark Slayer is definitely going to be available here to be taken down for Unity side, so I'm really curious what they're gonna do this time around because there were so many instances where Dark Slayer is open, but they still decide to just push, you know what, we could just try to finish the game, try to clear down the waves. There's the CC and Sean is gonna get pulled back. Lots of heals being popped by the side of Alpha Q, but even Hugh is so low. Yeah, gets jumped on in the back line by Excalibur, and it looks like they're going onto the core. Excalibur going low, he is uh, going to fall, and they need to be careful now as they are taking a fair amount of damage from Tawana, uh, Yorn, the last one standing, but doesn't matter in uh, the healing sanctuary. Gonna get taken down, and Unity have the confidence to just go in for that team fight and finish it all off. Made some risky plays here and there, but I think that was because of the lead they knew. Uh, were confident of and knew they had secured for themselves. They didn't even think about the Dark Slayer, just looking to finish this one out as quick as possible. Uh, but that is game number two, also going over to Unity in a 2-0 fashion. So GG, well played to them. Definitely. They, uh, Unity played that so clean, even though they didn't really pick out the meta picks, they were just so comfy, knowing the fact that once they reach their level 2, level 3, they're going to go all in into the jungle, try to make picks, increase the experience gap between, you know, Unity and uh, Q, and it just well for them. So... <laughs> clean and so good that was basically unity wiping the slate clean or the the floor clean with alpha q and i mean from the looks of it like just at the start of the game you thought that alpha q would be in a much more um safer situation yes. because they were they had all of these long range keep 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 yourself away from me type of heroes you know but then you know you know what you you know, you know what? We're gonna have a grop. We're gonna have to pull you in. And to add to that, Diaojin has needs time to set up her skill set, right? Yes. The grop can actually do that with his pull and ultimate to suck everybody in while Diaojin just, you know, 
um, in the uh, wise words of Iris, I'm not sure if he actually caught up into this. He said, "Let it go," while Jiao Chan was using her, you know, uh, frozen skills. I completely missed that. I just remember something exactly. about steal your whatever. Never mind. It's a st- it's a steal your <laughs> To what we were discussing, yeah, the Grag and the Diao Chan combo just works really well because they work hand in hand. Diao Chan for the wave clear, Grag, if the, the enemy is under a turret, then perhaps I just need the wave clear, then I'm going to try to hook you in. Or you could add the CC, which was the, the thing that Asurai just mentioned. Go for the CC for Diao Chan, and then I'll hook you in, and then I'll keep you, uh, keep you within our grounds with the ultimate. Very good Wumble combo. Again, it's all about assembling your mini squads during the early phases of the game so that they mesh well when you try to make your rotations and try to make your picks. So either you try to gank a lane or try to uh, invade a jungle, you have to make sure that these these sets of skills mesh well. Pre-level four, super important. When mm-hmm. level four comes, that's when your spike happens. And most of these things are super important when, when you try to make these 5v5 team fights happen. But most of the time, it only occurs when it's in the later phases of the game. Normally, you get a pick first and then you pursue Abyssal Dragon. And that's why we don't see 5v5 team fights during the uh, early, the first five minutes of the game. It's all about your two or three man squads, try to make a pick and then go for objectives. Yeah.